Previously, I showed you how to set up this small USB Zigbee coordinator. Today, we'll be looking at this crazy Zigbee coordinator that works shockingly good. It is easily one of the best, if not the best, Zigbee coordinator out there. It's big because it's basically a mini computer all crammed within. Unlike other Zigbee stick out there to set up all of your Zigbee devices and sensor, this one is truly versatile. Take a look at this diagram. How many Zigbee stick out there that can easily be a coordinator or repeater or even a remote coordinator? If you use a USB-C cable and plug the stick directly into your home assistant machine, it becomes a Zigbee coordinator. In the second diagram, powered up via the USB-C cable, plug it into your network via a CAT6 cable, and then set up as a repeater to strengthen your existing Zigbee network. Oh, did I mention this thing has PoE too? So yeah, one single CAT6 cable is enough to power up the stick, as well as get it onto your local area network via the CAT6 cable or Wi-Fi. Finally, you can set it up as a remote repeater, and this is what we'll be focusing on in today's video. I have a detached garage. There are several Zigbee sensors in there. Getting my Zigbee sensors to talk back to the coordinator in the house is extremely difficult. The LQI is in the teens. Setting up multiple repeaters simply don't work because the Zigbee 2.4 GHz signal is having a hard time going through several layers of bricks. So you can imagine my relief when I found out this stick can be set up as a remote coordinator. It is truly a lifesaver. Let's do a quick overview of the whole setup. Here's the HA machine that is connected to the LAN via CAT6 cable. A CAT6 cable connects the stick to my LAN, which will talk to the HA machine. This is how I'm powering the stick and getting it onto my network. Since I don't have any extra USB-C cable to power it up, I'm just going to use a PoE injector. It injects enough power and data to the stick. And on the other slot, I connect it to my network switch. Once it is powered up and on your network, open a browser up and type this in, slzb06.local. On the left-hand side, go to Settings, Firmware Update, check for Zigbee Updates, pick the latest coordinator and hit Flash. This will take about 90 seconds. Now is a good time for an ice cream break. Once you're done, let's go to your HA machine, go down to Add-ons, as you can see, I already have a Zigbee coordinator using the Zigbee 2 MQTT add-on. This USB stick is already plugged into the HA machine directly in the back. Now we need to add another Zigbee 2 MQTT instance to accommodate the remote coordinator. Go ahead and click on Add-on Store. Click on the three dots at the upper right hand corner. Since we have one repository already, we're going to add another one. But this time, we're going to add a forward slash at the end. I already have the link down in the description section for you, so all you have to do is just copy and then paste. And then click on Add, and then Close. Let's go back to the add-on store. Search for Zigbee2MQTT. This time, you should see additional Zigbee2MQTT. Control F5 if you have to. One of them you already have. The second one, you need to install. You can ignore all of the others, the extras, and I have no idea what they are. If you do, please let me know in the comment section below. Let's go back a little bit and go back to the add-ons. Here's the first one that was installed via the USB method. You can see the differences between this and the new one, because here you can see the numbers is totally different. The first one is 45, starts with 45. Let's go back. Here's the new Zigbee 2 MQT one. This one starts with 93. That's the only way you can differentiate it. On the left-hand side, they are identical, so there's no way to rename it on the left-hand side. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison of the USB stick versus the one that's connected over Ethernet. The data path is different. I just added number two at the end, by the way. The SOCAT is the same, identical. The MQTT is different. Here you can see that the base topic is just MQTT. Meanwhile, the base topic over here is MQTT2. User and password is identical. The port is totally different for the USB stick because it's connected via the serial method. Meanwhile, over here, the new Zigbee stick is connected over IP address. It is possible that your baud rate and adapter is totally different. 
in which case you can always verify. How do you verify? Let's go back to the Zigbee Stick configuration page. Once again, it's slzb-06.local. Go over to the left hand side, which is Zigbee2MQTT. And here are the settings that you saw earlier. The only difference is that the uh, port here is just the uh, name. Meanwhile, I'm using the IP address to be certain. All right, once you're done with configuration, go ahead and go back into the info tab, check the box for watchdog, and then click on start. Mine has already started, so that's why I'm not going to um, hit start. Show in sidebar if you want, if you want to see on the left hand side as seen here. By default, when you first add this coordinator in, this page will be totally blank, of course. Click on permit join and then start adding your Zigbee sensors or devices. Here you can see I have a bunch of sensors in the garage. There's the uh, small door, the entrance door. There's the big door for the uh, car to get in or out. And then there's a uh, light as well. The whole thing is set up so that way when I open a door, the light will automatically come on. And of course, once I leave, close the door, then the garage lights will automatically turn off. You can see the LQI here is extremely high because it's right next to the uh, Zigbee stick. Before, this thing was in the teens, like 10, 12, 15. It was pitiful. But now you can see we're getting super strong signal. Incredible. Just for fun, let's click on map. Load map. Here you can see the Zigbee stick right here. And here are the three devices again that's connected to the Zigbee stick. The LQI is extremely high. Let's go back to the configuration tab for a little bit. Remember, the MQTC section, we are connecting it to this server. This is in house number one. You can easily set this up in house number two, three, or even four. Once you have a ZOTR or tail scale network up and running, all you have to do is get that Zigbee stick onto the network, get the IP address, and feed it into this section right here. And that's it. Now you can monitor any devices, any Zigbee devices remotely from anywhere in the world. That's just incredible. All right, hopefully this video helps you on how to set up your Zigbee devices locally, remotely, or anywhere. I really appreciate you guys subscribing to my channel, liking this video, and thanks for watching.